comes Professor Gregorius T. Oswald. Welcome to the magical theater of the strange and fantastic. Once upon a time, before everything went to rack and ruin, the Moon Realm was ruled by a beautiful goddess. But then, Little Bear, for whom the Moon Goddess had shown nothing but love, stole two of his mistress's precious possessions. The Black Moonstone and a magic pair of scissors known as Calibrus. After declaring himself Moon Bear King, he invaded the goddess's castle, smashed the white moonstone to pieces. Once upon a time, I once upon a now. This is my moon cheese, so just get to the part where I sound good. <laughs> right, uh, yes, of course, <laughs> of course. Wasn't everyone so very wowed when the moon goddess was obliterated? Wasn't it just great that the impressive Moonbear King uh, gave a piece of the White Moonstone to each of his generals, screwing over the moon at large? Oh yes, the next three years were something special. Ah, yes. Now, where do I begin? He was the Moon Realm's ruthless new king, and intended to keep it that way. So night after night he spirited away the souls of children and locked them inside wooden puppets who were doomed to defend Castle Grizzlestaff. And what? Well, tonight was no exception. It would prove to be quite exceptional. The poor dearie. Look, Ying Yang, another day, another soul. Poor indeed. You're as bad as the tyrant. How many of these children are you planning to parade off to certain mutilation before you realize you're wasting your time? Why, one more, and then another after that? As many as it takes me to get my hands on calibers. <laughs> Meet our hapless hero, who's just linked back to life, firmly in the Moonbear King's clutches. Kutaro, Kutaro, your soul was summoned here at my behest. Kutaro, will you be my friend? Pals to the bitter end. Lovely. Another dunce who left his head in the Moon Bear King's belly. Listen, you're going to drop dead if you go without a head. And I'll be the one stuck with cleanup. Come on, let's find something else you can use. A substitute head. What's rattling around in there? It's a head <laughs> This should do nicely. Hey, you're all set. Remember those head pots. They may be weird, but they flap around with lots of useful heads. But one little touch, and they'll drop their stash. You know, a new kid on the chopping block like you ought to have a couple of noggins, at least. Can't take any chances. <sighs> See? Just like I said. Blast it! What am I doing wrong? Am I not powerful enough? Uh-oh. Look out! 
quick, and now. This is extremely important. One false move, and those heads of yours will tumble right off your shoulders. If you don't grab them right away, their meowjik will fade and... No more head. So remember, if you lose your head, pick it up post haste. Oh, and one other thing. Moon sparkles. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Voila! These are moon sparkles. Collect 100 and you'll be able to magically come back to life, even if you do lose all your heads. Let's keep looking. There, the witch's bloomers. Mune cats like me have no use for mune sparkles, so you can keep whatever we find. Keep your eyes peeled for moon sparkles if you want to stay alive. Oh, that moon bear king is always angry. Jehoshaphat! Oh, look there! You see that head symbol? Listen, every head has a little bit of meowjik to it. They react to places and objects that resemble them. Oh, why don't you just give it a try? Here, first choose the right head. Now, use the head's meow jig. Anyway, keep an eye out for those head symbols. Anything could happen. Meow, look at that. No wonder they're so skinny. <laughs> oh, what a little darling! Welcome! Please make yourself at home. Go and bring it to me! You'd better follow that fork. The witch doesn't take kindly to long waits. Watch that feisty fork! It's as wicked as the witch! Hey, I warned you! Remember to pick that up quick! No more heads! We pass through that shimmering gateway to proceed to the back of the kitchen! Now, make no mistake! Kutaro was not alone in his plight. The kitchen was already staffed by unfortunates whom the Moon Bear King had plucked from their beds. These children had been charged with keeping the Fickle King fed, and it was a miserably hopeless task. After all, his appetite was as vast and insatiable as his lust for power. Careful. There's this thing about fire and puppets. <laughs> All those moon sparkles, you don't want to toast yourself grabbing them. Ta-da! Happy birthday! A little pick-me-up from me to you. <laughs> Imagine being one of these tykes and spending dusk till dawn getting kneaded and grated, peeled and parboiled, marinated, melted, minced and mashed, or just zested, followed by a light raising. Mmm, I smell something delicious. Oh, and that was my lunch. Oh, wait, there's a spark of magic in it. See how using your head can change the world? And I do mean that quite literally. Mm. 
The witch, in case you're wondering, was a singularly screwy sorceress by the name of Esma Potts. You'd think someone that gifted with a cauldron would know a thing or two about cooking. And you'd be wrong. As for Kutaro's catty companion, name of Yin Yang, he used to be the moon goddess's faithful feline. One might say his current mistress was a step down in some regards. Watch out for the vegetables. In this kitchen, the cook is a cook, and the squash are out to squish. Hurry along now, dearies, because lazy boys are the first to get turned into grub. Reflexes. Oh! Where is the moon goddess? I demand to know where you have taken her! Oh! Unhand me, you louse! How dare you! That peppy princess ought to pipe down! Are you the new boy? I suppose you want me to get your soul back so you can return home. Well, not until you march those wooden legs up to the Moon Bear King's throne room and fetch me his magic scissors. You can do it. After all, you are a very special boy. Deja Mew. <laughs> How many very special boys are we up to now? Ying Yang. You can keep him company. Whoop de doo. <laughs> you can the throne to find the animals. Won't this be fun? Welcome to the Tower of Tribulations. But don't let a cheerful name like that fool you. This place is dripping with nasty traps. <laughs> See? You never know where a head might be hiding. Head pots, dreadnoughts, parking lots. Check everywhere. They don't say, get your head out of the gutter for nothing. <sighs>
No, no, not good. We have a spherical situation. Duck for your life before we get bowled over. Hey, still in one piece? been snatched away by an enormous arachnid. But why didn't he end up as dinner? Perhaps the spider mistook Kutaro for one of her 10,000 children. Hard to keep track of all those little darlings, even with eight eyes. The sun does have a burning temper. Ha! What did he do? I've got his precious daughter! <laughs> well, of course you do, sir. And even if you didn't, your majesticalness is more than enough to eclipse the sun. I've prepared a very special room for you, my dear princess. So please, I insist. Take a long rest. Meow. What luck! He's left Calibras unattended for once. Kutaro, you are one lucky person. <laughs> There before our hero towered the most impressive pair of scissors you've ever seen. The legendary Calibris. But Calibris was bound fast by vile vines, the twisted offspring of the Moonbear King's twisted magic. Kutaro, meet Calibris. Calibris is a cut above your average scissors. He used to serve the Moon Goddess. Step forward, boy. And take your destiny now. Now that's a shock. <coughs> I mean, an honor. Don't you see? Calibris has chosen you. And so Kutaro's fortunes were starting to look up. After all, he was now the proud owner of a pair of enchanted scissors. Still, it wasn't all good luck. Remember, Calibris belonged to the Moon Bear King.
And the boy's first challenge was to extricate himself from the booby trap he'd just set off. Rats, now this is a fine mess. You'd better use Calibrus to cut a way out of here. There, that's the ticket. Wizard. See? Take good care of Calibras, and Calibras will take care of you. Oh, lovely. Don't stop now, or that breeze will catch us. Property! My traps! How did you get out? Wait, how did you get in? You wretch! What have you done to you my throne room? Guards, apprehend that thief! Deftly and darkly, the grubs descended upon our trembling hero. But locked within each of them was the soul of a child just as scared as him. That's it! Very heroic. Even I am strong enough to yank these... There! You can use the head once the evil's been purged. So if you're running low on heads, just say the word, and I might consider helping. I'll pop your head! Clean off your shoulders! Get caught, and you'll be grabbified, just like the rest of his I poor want children. That sticky fingered scoundrel's head! Guards! Guards! I'll do it myself. Of all the Moonbear King's nightmarish magical creations, Weavers were some of the nastiest. This was Kutaro's first ever real dose of fear. But to escape the Weaver, those fears would need to be conquered. As the clash grew even clashier, the boy slipped, sliced, and sundered with the cold realization his life counted on it. Success! The fell weaver was no more. With the legendary Calibrus firmly in hand, Kutaro had taken the first step of his grand adventure.
Unfortunately, the next steps had to be taken as a run, as the Savage King was hot on our heroes. Tiger! Yes, sir. Where did that wealth go? Well, he can't have gotten far, sire. He has such tiny legs. I imagine he's right around the corner. I don't want him around the corner. I want him cornered! Find that thief, or I'll find someone who can! Please, sire, your blood pressure. I'll take care of it. Would you like a bath rub? A glass of warm milk? Anything? No? Bravo, Kutaro. None of the others ever made it half as far. This will be music to the witch's ears. Oh, man up, would you please? Would you prefer the grubs find you and the Moonbear King yanks your limbs off? <laughs>